This video is the first part of an ongoing and complete tutorial series on CCNA. In this series, I will explain everything you need to pass the CCNA exam. For example, I will include questions from previous CCNA exams and solve them through examples. It will help you understand the CCNA exam pattern and achieve the CCNA badge with maximum marks. I will include many hands-on examples from real-life networks. These examples will help you manage networks effectively after getting the job. I will start from the absolute beginning and gradually move to the advanced topics. You can complete this course without any prior knowledge of networking. So let us begin our journey toward getting the CCNA certification. CCNA is all about networks. It explains how networks work and how various Cisco devices function in networks. It sees networks from Cisco's angle. It describes the network portion that uses Cisco devices. Almost all Cisco devices covered by CCNA exam objectives work in the middle of the network. Because of this, CCNA exam objectives cover the topics that explain how devices communicate in networks and what they need to communicate. CCNA course doesn't teach you how to build a workgroup network or set up a server client network for data and resource sharing. For this, you can consider other vendor-specific exams such as RHCE or role-based exams from Microsoft. The CCNA course doesn't care what type of end devices you use to set up the network. It only cares about how the end devices communicate after setup. It explains everything devices need for effective and secure communication. Learning a few basic networking terms and functions of essential networking components is the first step of our ongoing journey. A network is a group of devices connected for data and resource sharing. A network needs at least two devices. There is no limit on the upper side. You can attach as many end devices as you want. The more devices you attach to a network, the more complex it becomes. To keep everything simple, let us start with a simple network. In this network, we have four computers connected through a switch. These computers are called end devices. In computer networking, an end device is the device that sends or receives data. An end device does not need to know how data travels to another end device. Moving data to another device is the responsibility of the media and networking devices. However, an end device needs to know how to pack data for the network. It works similarly to a parcel service in real life. You want to send a gift to your friend who lives in another city. You pack the gift in a parcel and give it to a courier company. The courier company transports your parcel to the city where your friend resides and delivers it to him. Your friend unpacks the parcel and receives his gift. You and your friend do not need to know how the courier company transports your parcel. If we relate this to the computer network, you and your friend are end devices. The path the courier company takes to reach your friend is the media. The warehouse where it filters and processes your parcel is an example of a networking device. A networking device is different from an end device. It does not generate any user data. It only filters and forwards the user data. An end device uses a LAN card to connect to the network. Each end device must have at least one LAN card. Without a LAN card, it cannot connect to the network. A device can have multiple LAN cards. Each LAN card allows it to connect to an additional network. For example, if an end device has two LAN cards, it can connect two separate networks simultaneously. A LAN card provides a unique identity to the end device in the network. It uses two addresses to provide this identity. These addresses are software addresses and hardware addresses. A hardware address is part of the LAN card. Each LAN card comes with a pre-configured hardware address. Generally, you never need to change hardware addresses. Moreover, most LAN cards do not allow you to update these addresses. These addresses are called MAC addresses. These are examples of MAC addresses. A software address requires manual configuration. You must assign it manually or configure a service that configure it for you. A software address is known as an IP address. These are examples of IP addresses. Each LAN card needs both addresses to provide a unique identity to the end device. Two LAN cards on a network cannot use the same address. Each LAN card must use unique MAC and IP addresses. LAN cards use these addresses to identify each other on the network. There are two types of LAN cards, wired and wireless. A wired LAN card has a plug-in socket on it. A wireless LAN card has an antenna on it. Both types use different media types to connect to the network. A wired LAN card uses a cable to connect to the network. A wireless LAN card uses radio spectrums to join the network. The wires or radio spectrum that connect end devices to the network are called media. Let us quickly wrap up all the terms we have learned so far. An end device generates, sends, and receives data in the network. It sits at the end of the conversation. A networking device filters and forwards data in the network. 
It works in the middle of the conversation. A LAN card connects an end device to the network. There are two types of LAN cards, wired and wireless. A wired LAN card connects with a cable. A wireless LAN card uses radio spectrums to connect to the network. A LAN card is also called a network interface card, NIC, network adapter, NIC, or a physical network interface. Each end device on the network uses a unique address. It is a combination of two addresses, IP address and MAC address. The IP address is customizable. You must manually assign it on all end devices or configure a service that automatically configures it on all end devices. The MAC address is permanent. It is part of the LAN card. Media is the medium an end device uses to connect to the network. There are two media types, wired and wireless. Wired media uses a cable. Wireless media uses radio spectrums. Now that we have learned the essential network terminology, let us understand some basic terms that describe network characteristics. Cost, security, speed, topology, scalability, reliability, and availability are the characteristics Cisco administrators use to define network properties. Let us understand these characteristics in detail. Cost is the price you pay to install and manage the network. A network or system administrator considers it in the first place while building a network. A network needs many components. Each component increases the network cost. Administrators add only required components and exclude optional ones to reduce the network cost. Security defines steps administrators take to protect network components and the data they transmit. There are two methods to implement security on the network, software and hardware. The software method includes the steps you can take without adding a security component to the network. The most common methods are regularly updating installed operating systems and applications, using a software firewall on all systems, using an antivirus program on all systems, removing all unnecessary files and applications using a complex password policy. The hardware method adds security components to the network. Many security appliances are available in the market. You can choose based on your requirements and budget. Speed describes how fast data transmits between network endpoints. It depends on many factors, such as cable type and length, the physical layout of the network, and networking devices. Topology describes the physical and logical structure of the network. It includes the cabling layout and how the data moves between components. Scalability defines how much room the network has for future growth. A network adaptable to new changes, including new users, applications, and network components, is a scalable network. For example, this network has room only for one more PC. If we want to add more than one PC, we must replace this switch with a switch having more ports. Reliability defines the ability of network components. A component that takes the least time to reach the functional state and works with its full capability during peak time is reliable. For example, we have two Ethernet switches. The first Ethernet switch reaches a functional state within 10 seconds after the power on, while the second takes 50 seconds. The first switch is more reliable than the second one. Availability represents the time the network is available for users. It excludes the downtime that occurs because of because of an outage or scheduled maintenance. These are network characteristics we need to understand at the beginning. Now let us learn some important terms related to the network type. Based on the geographical location of a network, we can classify it into three types, LAN, MAN, and WAN. LAN represents a network that resides in a close geographic area, such as a floor of a building, a building itself, or within a campus environment. It includes end devices such as PCs, servers, switches, voice gateways, firewalls, and other devices. MAN represents a network that resides within a city. It uses many advanced devices such as access points, fiber cables, routers, and multi-layer switches. WAN represents the network that spans different geographical locations. It connects multiple LANs. For example, suppose we have an office in Chicago and another in San Francisco. If we want to connect these offices, we must install cables between both sites. Installing cables between such a long distance is neither convenient nor practically possible for an individual. It requires a lot of resources, money, and legal formalities. WAN provides a cost-effective solution to this problem. It includes many technologies that offer inner-city connections, such as lease lines and broadband connections. We can pick any of these solutions based on our requirements and budget. CCNA course uses four terms to describe various parts of a WAN network. These terms are SOHO, branch office, mobile user, and corporate office. SOHO is a standalone LAN network. Usually, users install and use it for personal use. It is not a part of any other network. 
A branch office is also a LAN network, but it is part of a network connected through WAN connections. A mobile user works in more than one branch office. A corporate office is the primary LAN network of a network. The management board of the company works here. That's all for this introductory video. In this video, we learned basic terminology used in the CCNA course. Now let us take the CCNA exam questions from this video. You can type the answer to these questions in the comment section. There can be multiple answers to a question. I will check your answer and let you know whether it is correct.